If you're new to Gaming Mice, you're probably going to get a bit lost in the endless sea of options available to you. What do all these numbers mean? How light should your mouse be? How much should you spend? And is this shape right for your teeny tiny baby hands? This can all get pretty overwhelming. If you're looking for a new mouse and don't know where to start, well, this video is for you. I'll share five things to look out for when picking a new gaming mouse, how to find the most comfortable mouse for you, if these big numbers actually mean anything, and more. We're going to start off with one of the most important parts of gaming mice. With how long people play video games these days, shape as well as comfort is vital. So you can keep playing games for longer and also be able to do strenuous wrist activities well into your 30s. To understand the best shape for you, look at what you're using now. A great thing to do as well if you can is to record your mouse hand whilst playing, as your resting grip can be different to your playing grip. Things to look out for are your finger placement, the points of contact, and most importantly, what areas of the mouse you currently find comfortable or uncomfortable. As an example, let's take a look at my grip when holding a mouse. My ring and pinky finger are up against the right side, my thumb is up tight against the left side, and I trigger the side buttons by just rolling it upwards. For this example, I'd want a mouse a bit more snug against my palm, so what I would look for in a new one is something that has a similar design for the sides of the mouse, but something with a higher hump at the rear of the mouse so it sits closer to my palm. There's resources available to give you a good look at the shape of a mouse without having to buy it. Eloshapes.com provides a basic outline and comparison, but it has flaws, with side buttons blocking views of the curvature and a lack of detail, but it's updated mostly so it's a good starting point. Artings.com has a far more detailed comparison tool as they are actually 3D scans of the mouse itself, but they can be a bit slow on getting the latest mice. One thing is very important though, there is no guaranteed way to find out if a mouse is comfortable without you using it first. But if you have a better understanding of how you hold your current mouse and use it as an example, you should be able to find a more comfortable mouse for you. But there is another part of comfort that I want to talk about, which is the flare and coating side of things. For mouse coatings, the more common types are a soft matte and a slightly coarse matte texture. There was another option which was only used by the most disgusting of human beings, which was known as glossy. These have thankfully almost been completely eradicated and the users of said glossy mice have been exiled. Unfortunately, it does mean there's only two choices of coating and one of them is quite uncommon. It's expected that if you don't like the coating, you either have to suffer or use grip tape. When I talk about flare, I refer to things such as rubberized grips that are actually attached to the shell, engravings on the mouse, and holes. I think that rubberized grips and engravings on a mouse by default are to be avoided. If you don't like it, you have to apply grip tape to the mouse, and if you don't like grip tape, which provides a different texture, then there's no option for you. As for holes, these are a dying trend, but some mice do keep them. I personally don't mind holes on my mice as long as they aren't on the sides of the mouse. This is mainly because fingers placed on the side do tend to rub when you move your mouse and can get uncomfortable. As lightweight mice without holes exist now, I'd recommend avoiding mice that have them. This next section can cause a bit of a headache, especially if you're not regularly following the latest technology in gaming mice. As a general guide, anything with a Pixar 3370 or a 33 95 sensor will be fine. These days most modern gaming mice come with a 3395 sensor and it's safe to say that most mice with that sensor probably experience no issues. Now the numbers from a marketing standpoint. DPI is often used as a big number generator that makes it sound better than other mice and I personally don't think it should be used as a deciding factor when it comes to picking a gaming mouse. As for polling rate this is now used as a big marketing focus. In my opinion at the moment you do not need a poll rolling rate above 1000 Hz. The performance benefits are really small and sometimes you have to pay more for it and you're likely not going to notice any difference. Some people say they do, but they're probably completely zooted out of their minds on Adderall and could probably feel the wings of a bee flapping from five miles away. Now, for some reason, I still get comments about things like why would you choose a wireless mouse is why it's still okay. 
Wireless is 100% safe to have now. There is no real performance impact at all. The only issue that you might have at the start is forgetting to charge it. But most mice have a battery indicator on the left side now, so it's easier to see when it needs charging, or even have an indicator on the wireless dongle. One thing I will say though, avoid plugging the dongle into your PC case directly. Most wireless mice come with a USB cable and adapter, so plug the dongle into the adapter and have it sitting on your desk, just to avoid any wireless interference. Now we get to the final two sections which are the most important. The first one is a big feature of gaming mice these days and is constantly debated. And that is weight. Everyone is going to have their own opinion on the weight of a mouse. But these are my honest thoughts on the matter. A lower weight is for the most part a lot better. There's less friction on your mouse pad so it's easier to move the mouse and therefore more responsive. It also has the benefit of putting less strain on your arm, wrists and fingers or whatever your chosen appendage of movement is. The last thing you want is to create any fatigue, as you may end up experiencing pain and discomfort which can cause serious problems in the future. And one way of eliminating that discomfort is to use a lighter mouse. Personally, my maximum weight for a gaming mouse that I would use for first person shooters is around 85 grams. Anything higher than that I wouldn't use, especially for more than a couple of hours. One counter argument is that lightweight mice are fragile. Honestly, out of all the mice I've reviewed, there's been maybe three mice in total that I would say feel fragile and cheap. Most lightweight mice these days feel very well made and high quality. For this next section, I am going to be very honest and upfront about. These days, the justification to spend more than $150 on a gaming mouse is really tough. I personally do think that there can be mice that are worth over $150. But my general rule when it comes to reviewing them and recommending mice that cost that much is based on a few things. Does it boast innovative technology with practical benefits? Take the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro and Viper V2 Pro, priced at $149.99. Initially, they introduced notable technological advancements, including optical switches, a next generation sensor, and full sized mice at a reasonable weight. While they were worth the investment at the time of release, today's standards may not justify paying the full price. Two, do I feel like I have got my money's worth? This is the final question I ask myself when recommending a mouse, and most mice that cost over $150 now tend to fail it. At this price point, it really has to be a flawless product in quality, performance, and the user experience. There are some great mice that cost $100, which heavily compete against some of the mice over $150. I would say that spending between $90 and $125 is optimal. So if you follow some of the advice that I've given you in this video, you should hopefully start finding the best mouse for you. This is obviously just a guide as well and it won't apply to everybody. We all have our own personal preferences. But I hope that this should have answered a few questions that a lot of people have when it comes to first buying a gaming mouse. Now though I'd like to direct you to my best mouse of 2023 video which will have a series of fantastic mice for you to choose from.